So I don't know if you guys can see, I'm right underneath the car. Here's the transmission, it's a little grimy. Um, but this is a very wet oil pan and it's been like this since I did the last oil change, but it seems like it's not going away even though I cleaned it and degreased it. You can see it's wet and so it's leaking oil as well as uh, you see that drain plug, that's leaking oil as well. And then even further, right above the drain plug is uh, one of our issues as well. Right above it, there's a, uh, it's leaking up there, but also uh, it looks like there's a bunch of gasket or sealant all over it. It looks like it was previously closed. Um, this oil pan looks like uh, it was tapped for turbo. Uh, and so uh, it's like in a secondary oil line. Um, and so it's kind of a bummer that I got the car like this. I didn't know when I bought it. I should have looked underneath the car, but uh, we're gonna have to change this out. All right, so um, with our oil pan problem, what we're gonna do is drop the subframe. Um, so what I've done is remove the axle nut um, and I'm zip tying the axles to the shock as well as the caliper. Um, I am not taking off the ball joint. That's kind of what they recommended. Um, if I did that, then I can just drop the arms. I'm gonna drop everything with the knuckle and I'm keeping the uh, lower control arm connected. You can see that everything's resting on that right now. I unbuckled the uh, sway bar end link as well as the ABS sensor. And so that's kind of what it looks like so far. Um, over on the other side, I've pretty much done the same thing, uh, zip tied, making sure, um, these are out of the way and I, um, took apart the bolts. You can see uh, right there is one bolt and then there's like three bolts on the bottom for the motor mount, the rear motor mount. And I also did the same for the front motor mount, which uh, hard to point out, but it's right under here. It's right underneath the radiator. And so all that's left is, I'm gonna jump back on the floor. All that's left is for me to unbolt four of these 17 millimeter screws, one on each side, and then the subframe should drop. Um, I put these jack stands on uh, both sides, so hopefully it'll catch it. And then we have these, or we, I put these jacks, floor jacks, and then I put these jack stands on the side to stabilize it as it's coming down. Now, uh, once I take out the four bolts, I think it's gonna drop. And then from there, we're gonna have to like lower it bring the jack stands down and then just lower the floor jack till it hits the ground. That's the theory. Um, I'm going to do it now. I'm just kind of explaining what I've done to dismantle certain bolts to get it ready. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is to replace the oil pan, which I need access to the side of the screws where the subframe is covering. So that's kind of uh, the next project and I'm gonna just remove everything today and kind of get it all ready. As you can see, the subframe is resting on the floor. And these, this here, this long bolt is the subframe bolt. See how many threads it has. Um, now I need to move the oil subframe back so I have access to the oil pan and we'll go from there.
Uh, so we're working on taking out the existing oil pan. We're almost there. It's a note to sell for anyone else. So just there's always these two screws hanging back there. So there's a total of 18 screws from what I counted. So now we're uh, loosening everything. All right, so I removed the oil pan and right now I'm in the middle of scraping kind of all this gasket off. I've made a lot of progress. Uh, it looks a lot better, but there's still like little tiny gaskets on the sides. Uh, the previous owner put so much gasket that it's like inside and outside of the engine, um, but I've got rid of most of it. Uh, you can see kind of all those things there. So. Uh, I'm just gonna keep scraping along. I'm gonna wipe it down. And then I uh, just wanna make sure it's prepped and ready for uh, installation of the new oil pan. Uh, I'll probably leave this overnight. Just kinda let the oil drip out. So this is the oil pan that I just took out. It's the original stock one. Um, you could see there's still oil there. And uh, as well as here, you see all those little um, extra pieces of gasket that I picked off. Um, there was just too much gasket on it. Um, and, you know, I don't think it was helping because you can see all around, it's just been leaking and it's been just covering the oil pan, the subframe, everything. It's been a while, been, been hard to clean um, so far. But um, you could see what happened here. The previous person tried to tap it for turbo and, uh, you know, it just didn't didn't work out as well, I guess. Um, it was still leaking from the seal um, all the way through and, you know, I had all that extra gasket there. So I don't, I don't know if this was working when they first put it together, but it's out now. And what we're replacing it with is what you see here, K-Tune oil pan. It's a little different than the stock because it doesn't have those little corners there. And you have to get a different flywheel, which I'll show you guys, but it's pretty much the same. Uh, all the bolts are in all the exact same places. And let's take a look. Yep, all the bolts are in the same places. Except that we don't have these ones, which is fine. Um, this is all we really need for the oil pan itself. It's actually uh, stainless steel, and so it, um, if it gets hit, it'll get bent, but it won't crush like this uh, aluminum one. And it comes with the K-tuned oil plug that's already magnetic, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. So this is, a, this is our upgrade, and it comes, it also comes with uh, bolts.org too. I took off the stock ones, but I'm not sure I'm gonna use it. But that's kind of it that we have right now. So um, we're gonna let it sit. I'm a little tired from taking everything out. Tomorrow I'll get started on adding the new oil pan. And I'm, uh, I have a dilemma. I'm just deciding if I should go with the uh, Honda Bond or if I should go with uh, this is a Kometic gasket, and uh, I've heard good things about it. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. It doesn't need any RTV or Honda Bond. You just kind of put it on it and go from there. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna go Honda Bond 
or this Cometa gasket, but this is gonna be our newest upgrade, the K-Tune oil pan. All right, so it's the next day and we're gonna install the K-Tuned uh, oil pan. Uh, it's steel. Um, has a slightly different shape, but it's it's everything lines up perfectly. If usually the stock um, oil pan has these kind of grooves that sit out and it has like a kind of a metal collar that kind of helps you kind of place it. But um, the K-Tune is a little different. It's a little lighter as well. It comes with um, a magnetic drain plug from K-Tune. Um, so we should be good to go there. It already has, um, you can see a crush washer as well. Um, so this is it. This is the K-Tuned oil pan. Um, I also, um, it came with 16 volts. Uh, when you take it off um, your oil pan, it's 18 volts, but this is 16 volts for as less notches. So you're not using as much as that. Usually you could use Honda Bond. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go with the Kometic gasket right over here. Um, so it's going to fit exactly like this as it goes on top. And this is for, um, as you can see here, this is for, um, this is the part number. It's a K281A2A3.060 um, AFM. It's like an uh, aluminum gasket. Uh, it's very thin, um, but thick enough to compress. Um, so this will be kind of what we're using. And then one other thing is um, your RSX flywheel, because it has those little notches, right? Um, it just kind of narrows the flywheel cover. So it's just like a little square. We're actually going to be using this right here. Uh, so when you get the K-Tune, you have to get a different... Uh, flywheel cover. I think this is from like a Civic. Um, and so this is the part number 21351 PNA 000. And the only difference is the original flywheel cover had two holes. This one has three. So we might have to get an extra bolt. But um, this is what we'll be using to install. There you go. So here's the uh, Kometic gasket. I'm going to put that aside for now, right on its cardboard. And what I want to do is uh, just clean the surface or the edge uh, with a little brake clean, just to make sure it's not full of dust. So, just a, just a quick spray from the microfiber. Gonna wipe across here. I'm just gonna wipe it down. And we're just gonna let it dry. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the sides here. Just gonna wipe it loose of any extra oil. It's been sitting overnight, so there's quite a bit of extra. We put brake clean all over. Just gonna wipe it dry. So you can see I've moved out the subframe just so I have clearance to go underneath the car. I put it on kind of rollers there and dropped everything with it. Um, so now we're ready to install the oil pan. And since we're using the Kometic, all we need to do is just kind of line the holes and you can see all the holes kind of fit perfectly in place. And now we just take the bolts, get underneath the car and do the install. All the bolts on just to make sure it clears the gasket and now 
I'm just gonna start torching. So I have one more bolt left and it's the 16th bolt and I'm going to start tightening it at 8.7 pounds, foot pound, so we're at five, six, six and a half, seven point one, eight point three, point six, two point seven. So yeah. That's pretty much it. Everything's been uh, tightened to spec. My arms are pretty tired from just constantly holding the uh, the torque wrench. But there it is. There's the uh, K-Tune oil pan using the commended gasket, using the K-Tune bolts. And I tightened it to spec following the bolt pattern at a uh, 8.7 foot pounds so we'll see how this holds up and uh we'll go from there um right over here is what i was talking about earlier this is the flywheel cover you can see that um before we had the the oem one it kind of went all the way out here now we don't this is the uh oem cover when you put it on it's way too small at this point this is where it used to go right and so you have all that exposed um, so we're not going to use this anymore. Instead, if I can find the part. Ah, there we go. Instead, we're going to use this one. So you can see that comparison between the two. Um, and it's just going to fit like this. So it's going to fit on that. That screw there. This screw here and that screw in the corner there. So if anyone's wondering what bolts you use for the, the new flywheel cover, if you're using the K2 and oil pan, right over here, that's the K2 and oil pan that we just installed. This is a flywheel cover. Um, I ordered this off three series parts. You can see that there, um, but here's the, the Honda part number right over there, 957-01-06-01208. And that's pretty much what you, the part you need. This is the original one off the flywheel cover for the Type S. It's kind of old and crusty, but it's actually the same one here. And so um, I ordered off K-Series parts. They gave me three staples together. And this is what we'll be using to install the flywheel cover. So this is the last part of the install. We have the flywheel cover kind of ready to put on. So it's pretty much this here. We're gonna, just line it up looks great and we're gonna hand screw the bolts in I'm going to do the same up here. And the last one. And that's also at 8.7. Um, so that's it. We're done with the install. Um, the key tune looks great. You can see the, the drain plug there. Um, let me flip the camera. You can see all the bolts are hand torqued at 8.7 foot pounds. The Kometic gasket, I could feel it kind of crimping a little bit. Um, so we're good there. Um, and so I think we're ready to uh, 
install the subframe, put everything back, and put oil. <laughs>